Could you believe that Jem has gone beyond what you know? It now looks like a wire question. Even if you do not write this mock jam, we are preparing to write the main jam exam. I want you to watch this video to the end because I'm going to expose the real mock jam questions and the solutions to them. Because we all know that jam repeats questions. In case you see it in your exam or something similar to it, with no further ado, let's get right into the video. Calculate the frequency of the sound wave generated in a pipe of length 0.45 meters closed at one end. If the velocity of the sound in air is 340 meters per second, option A, 5.5 haze, option B, 188.9 haze, option C, 240.4 haze, option D, 590 haze. Now for us to solve this question, one thing that will come to your mind is this, closed pipe. A closed pipe, what is the frequency of a closed pipe? So let's go. The frequency of a closed pipe, which is the fundamental frequency of a closed pipe, is given by F0 is equal to V over 4L. Because it is a closed pipe. I believe we all know how we got this 4L as the wavelength. So let me show you. By stating that the distance between a node and an antinode is equal to lambda over 4. So that is, if I have node and antinode, the distance is lambda over 4 and that distance is what l okay so if you want to get the lambda which is the wavelength you're simply going to say this is over 1 cross what multiply so lambda is equals to 4l okay so that is why we got this as 4l so i am going back to work to explain this to you in case you see something similar to this because no jam repeats questions so let's go back to the question okay we are giving the length to be 0 0.45 meters so let's write l it's equals to 0 0.45 meters. I'm giving the speed of the wave to be 340 meters per second. So that is my speed is equals to 340 meters per second. So now we can now solve the fundamental frequency or the frequency of this closed pipe. Okay, so let's go. We have F naught is equals to 340 divided by 4 multiplied by 0 0.45. Is that clear? So let's bring it down by saying F0 is equals to 340 divided by, so let's work it out. Now by the time you multiply, this is going to have what? 1.8, okay? So simply, by the time you solve for that, the answer is going to be 188.9 Hz, right? So this is the frequency or the fundamental frequency of this closed pipe. Do we understand? Now, from what we've got so far, the correct option to this particular question is option B. The cubic expansivity of mercury is 1.8 times 10 to the power of minus 4 per Kelvin. And the linear expansivity of glass is 8.0 times 10 to the power of minus 6 per Kelvin. Calculate the apparent expansivity of mercury in a glass container. We are giving the following options. Option A. 1.00 times 0 to the power of minus 4 per Kelvin. Option B, 1.25 times 0 to the power of minus 4 per Kelvin. Option C, 1.56 times 0 to the power of minus 4 per Kelvin. Option D, 2.00 times 0 to the power of minus 4 per Kelvin. Now for us to solve this question, you must know that cubic expansivity, one thing that will come to your mind is that we have real cubic expansivity and we have what? Apparent cubic expansivity. So let me state the formula connecting both of them. So let's go. Gamma R is equals to gamma A plus what? Gamma. Now this is the real cubic expansivity, while this is the apparent cubic expansivity, and this is the expansivity of the container. Now remember, now for us to get this expansivity of the container, we have to multiply the 3 by the linear expansivity. Do we understand? Because this is the expansivity of the container. So I'm setting the parameters given to us. So let's go. The real cubic expansivity is given by gamma r is equals to 1.8 times 0 to the power of minus 4 per Kelvin. Right? Then the linear expansivity of this material is given by that is alpha, sorry, is given by 8 times 10 to the power of minus 6 per Kelvin. Okay, now for us to get this gamma here, we are going to multiply by 3 alpha, okay? 
we say that gamma, which is the expansivity of the container, is equals to 3 alpha, okay? That will give us 3 times 8 times 7 to the power of minus 6, okay? Now, it will give rise to 2.4 times 7 to the power of minus 5 per Kelvin. That is my gamma. Now, what am I looking for in this question? I'm looking for what? The apparent cubic expansivity, okay? So let's just put it here and make it the subject so that the answer will come out smiling. So we have that gamma R is equals to gamma A plus gamma, right? Then gamma A is equals to gamma R minus what? Gamma. Let's just put in what we have then we we'll subtract, okay? Now this is gamma A is equals to what's my gamma R? My gamma R is giving us 1.8. Eight times seven to the power of minus four. Okay, then minus two point four times seven to the power of minus five. So let's just work it out. Now, if you work it out, the answer is going to give us gamma a is equals to one point five six times seven to the power of minus four per what Kelvin. Right? Now, if you still want to break down how you got this, you can say that. Let me do it here. Gamma A is equal to, so this is the same thing as saying 0 0.00018, right? Then minus 0 0.00024. Is that clear? Of which by the time you subtract it, you're going to have 1.56 times 7 to the power of what? Minus 4 pair. Kelvin. Is that is that clear now? So either you do it this way or you do it this way, it's still going to be what? Correct, right? And what we've got so far, the correct option to this question is option C. A person standing 99 meters from the foot of a tall building drops his hands and hears an echo 0 0.33 seconds later. Calculate the speed of the sound in air. Option A. 132 meters per second, option B, 150 meters per second, option C, 300 meters per second, option D, 600 meters per second. Now, this question is talking about echo. Once you clap your hands or say any word and you hear yourself back, that is echo. We all know that the velocity of a wave is equals to velocity is equals to distance over what time but for echo the distance traveled is twice so once you hear that hears himself or hears it it becomes an echo not just normal velocity okay now the velocity of an echo is two times the distance over time oh that is clear so let's go by stating parameters that we are given so we have the distance to be 99 meters and we have the time to be 0 0.33 seconds okay so let's just simply get the speed by saying v is equals to 2 multiplied by distance over what time now this will give me 2 times 99 over 0 0.33 is that clear now we can now say that if you multiply it's going to give me 198 divided by 0 0.33 which will give rise to 600 meters per second right now this is how to solve question involving echo do we understand and you must not forget that we have the applications of this echo it is used to determine the speed of sound in air and for exploration for oil and gas and the depth of the seabed these are the applications of echo in case you see questions on the application all right, from what we've got so far, the correct option to this question is option D. At an air temperature, 30 degrees Celsius, the saturated vapor pressure of water vapor is 24.4 millimeter mercury. And at dew point at 60 degrees Celsius, it is 10.5 millimeters mercury. Find the relative humidity of the air. Option A, 21%. Option B, 43%. Option C, 75%, and option D, 98%. For us to solve this, we must remember what is the formula of relative humidity. Relative humidity is given by 
ROH is equal to saturated vapor pressure at dew point, okay, now divided by saturated vapor pressure at a temperature, right? Then because it is expressed as a percentage, you will now say multiply by 100%. Now from this question, the saturated vapor pressure at dew point is given by SVP at dew is given by 10.5 millimeter mercury and SVP at L temperature is given by 24.4 millimeter mercury. So now we can solve simply by putting into what we have by saying the relative humidity is equal to the SVP at dew point is given as 10.5 divided by 24.4, right? Then we multiply by 100%. Okay, now by the time you work it out, you're going to get what? 0 0.430 multiplied by 100%, which will give rise to 43% as my relative humidity. Is that clear? Now, if you see a question like this or something similar to this, this is how to solve it. I hope that is clear. From what we've got so far, the correct option to this question is option B. Calculate the energy produced by a heater with voltmeter supply of 220 volt when a current of 10 amperes pass through it for 150 seconds. We have the following options. Option A, 3.3 times 10 to the power of 5 joules. Option B, 3.3 times 10 to the power of 4 joules. Option C, 2.2 times 10 to the power of 5 joules. And option D, 2.2 times 10 to the power of 4 joules. I explained in my previous video how to get the heat emitted by electric heater and I said that E or heat or work done, okay? They are still the same thing. Then it is equals to IVT or I square ROT or V square over ROT or PT, right? We can use any of these depending on the question given so let's look now into this question have the pd to be 220 volts so that is v is equals to 220 volt and a current of 10 amperes we have the current to be 10 amperes and the time is given as 150 seconds so time is what given as 150 seconds now looking for the energy now the formula that will go into this is going to be what IVT, right? So we are going to say that energy is equals to IVT. So simply by multiplying what we have, and we see our answer smiling. So what is my I? My I is what? 10 multiplied by 220 multiplied by 150. Okay? Now, our answer is equals to 330000, right? Joes. But we can leave it in standard form by going this way. This is what? One, two, three, four, five, right? That is 3.3 .3 times 10 to the power of what? Five joules. That becomes my energy. Exactly. So now if you have a question that is similar to this, but you have your parameters like potential difference, the resistance, or power and time, you can use either of them. It's still the same time, you are still correct. Remember, it's either you're looking for electrical energy, electrical heat, electrical work done, they are still the same. Hope that is clear. Now, from what you've got so far, the correct option to this question is option A. If this video was able to help someone out there, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and turn on the notification button to get notified each time I post videos. And lastly, do not forget to share so that other students that are preparing for this same forthcoming exam can see it and learn from there. I'll see you next time in the next episode. Bye for now.